Gee guys, it's pretty bright and sunny out here. How about we put our polarizing sunny glasses on? Is that better? Much better. Excellent. Now what are polarizing sunglasses and what is a polarizer? So I'm going to use a couple of polarizing filters here. I'm going to change the direction of one of them to block the light out. Let's go ask some people how that works. So Sue, tell us what we're going to do this afternoon. We are going to ask some people to explain uh, what's happening when we make these lenses do this. So let's go find out what they know. Hello. I'm going to ask you a question. Get you to put those two on top of each other. What do you say? It's getting lighter and it is pitch black. Whoa, it's me. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can we ask you a question? Sure. Okay. I've got some filters here. Is this the sun thing with the, with the UV? Oh, it's not. No, I'll, no. Let you, I'll let you guys have a look. All right. Okay. Can we put that on oh, top of? Oh, that's fun. Yeah. That one? And then, can you rotate one of them, like flip it 90 degrees? So just okay. slowly rotate it through, and then explain what you, can you describe what you're saying? <laughs> Not both of them at the same Not time. Not both, just one. Just yep. one. Oh, it's getting darker. Oh, where'd oh, you whoa, go? It's pitch black, that's crazy. Where are you? It's like a mirror. What? <laughs> that's so fun. Hi girls. Hi. We're making a video for YouTube for physics. Okay. Um, okay. And now, can you rotate one of them, like 90 degrees, and, yeah. and look at her, look, look at her through it, and keep rotating. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me and describe what you see. I just see myself, like okay. a mirror. That's so cool. And? Yeah, so what can you see? Yeah, I can see you and then I can't see you. And then you can't oh, see, yeah. right? So right. it goes from being pretty see-through <laughs> yeah, to then being now... completely black? <laughs> yeah. Okay, do you have any idea of what's going on? No, none, none at all. None at all? So let's take a simple analogy where I have a rope and as you can see, I'm creating a transverse wave that is aligned in the vertical direction. Now let's say I pass my rope through a picket fence that is aligned in the same direction. What's going to happen? The wave is going to pass through because my transverse wave is aligned in the same direction as my picket fence. We say the angle is zero. But what if I turn the picket fence around 90 degrees? None of my wave is going to pass through to the other end. I'm going to have a flat rope. That's a very simple analogy for polarization. It is simple, however, if in terms of electromagnetic radiation, it becomes slightly more complex. So here is a little animation of the electromagnetic wave. And if you've seen my video on Maxwell, you'll have already seen this. And so what we have here is an electric field and a magnetic field propagating along the X axis. Now, for our intents and purposes, we're going to be only concentrating on the electric field. So we're going to turn off the magnetic field. As you can see my wave looks like my rope and it is in the vertical direction. But the reality is you're going to get all sorts of angles coming at the same time. So you're going to get some going in this direction, some coming in that direction, some going to go in all sorts of different directions. In other words, we have all the planes possible for the electric field to be in as it comes towards you. So when we look at this animation, we're only dealing here with only one particular plane of the electric field. So in actual fact, this is already polarized because you only get one plane. You don't get any in the other directions. What I also have is this grid. And this grid is like my picket fence. And my picket fence, in this case, is aligned in the same direction as my actual electric field. So my electric field is passing through very nicely, thank you very much. But what would happen if I change the angle of my picket fence? You can see the angle here is zero and the values here are in radians. So if I change the angle, so let's say we are at 90 degrees, uh, in this case, my angle here is approximately pi over two, and you can see I'm going to get very little signal out. But what happens if I have something in between? Now, if I use my rope analogy, you know that no matter what angle you choose, as long as it is anything but zero degrees, your, your rope will always be blocked to some degree. But this, is, but this isn't the case here. You're going to see I'm going to still get amount of electromagnetic wave passing through, even though my wave here is at an angle.
So let's start with what we call unpolarized light. So although an electromagnetic wave such as light is a transverse wave and thus has a particular orientation, any light that usually comes off something that we see is because of excited atoms. So that means every atom is transmitting an electromagnetic wave at some sort of random angle. So the light we, we see has a variety of planes. So that's represented here by my multiple arrows. So we're only looking at a two dimensional diagram. What will happen if I put a vertically orientated grid or polarizer in its path? Well, obviously these vertical ones here will get through and the horizontal ones will not get through. But what about the angled ones? Well, the angled ones all have vertical and horizontal components. And I'll just choose this one here. So this one here has a vertical component like so and a horizontal component similar over here. This one has a vertical component like so and a horizontal component like so. So what's going to happen is only the vertical components get through of all the various planes. And so as a result, we're going to get something that looks like this. Now, the intensity that we get as a result is if this is the original intensity over here, then the intensity here is going to be half of that intensity. So now what we have is polarized light. So now let's introduce a second polarizer. And now what we'll refer to there is as the analyzer. So the first one becomes our polarizer because it's polarized light. And the second one analyzes the polarized light that comes off it. So we call this the analyzer. Now, if the analyzer is also vertical, what intensity will you have on the other side? Well, that's pretty easy. Since this is all vertical in the first place, they're all going to pass through equally. So you're going to have this same um, intensity of light passing through. So we're going to get some, basically the same value. But what if I turn my polarizer around so that it's at 90 degrees? Well, because all of this is vertical and all of this is horizontal, no electric field gets through. And so therefore the intensity here is going to be equal to zero. But what if my analyzer is not at zero or 90, but at 30 degrees? my light that is coming in, my polarized light has two components in relation to the analyzer. It has this component here and it has this component here. Now this component along here is 90 degrees to my analyzer. So we're not going to have that pass through, but this component is going to come through. Now the angle we have here is theta. It's the angle between my polarizer and my analyzer. And because this is the cosine component, the amount of electric field passing through is going to be the original electric field multiplied by the cosine of the angle. Now, the relationship between the electric field strength and the energy passing through, and thus the intensity passing through, is a square relationship. That is, I is proportional to E squared. That means that the intensity we get on the other side of the analyzer is equal to the intensity coming in. And we're going to call this IP to differentiate it from this guy over here. So this here becomes IP, the polarized intensity that's coming in, multiplied by the cos of theta. And this is squared. Now, there is some mathematics behind this particular relationship. I won't go into it now. I'll probably leave that for another video. It's certainly not necessary at this stage. So if we then look at the mathematics involved, we know that the cosine of 30 is root three over two. And therefore, if we square that, we get three over four. So therefore our new intensity that is the intensity that we get on the outer side is equal to the intensity of the value coming in multiplied by co squared, in this case 30. And of course, that means we get three quarters of IP. Similarly, if I am going to change this to 45 degrees, because cosine of 45 is one over root two, we're only going to get half of that value. 
at that position, of course, if this is the original density, then at this particular position, we're going to get only a quarter of the original intensity at that position. Since we started with I naught here, here it's half already, and then of course a quarter over here because we're getting a half of the intensity drop over here. If I then go to 60, we know that the cosine of 60 is a half, so now I have only one quarter, zero, so we're getting nothing through to the other side. So now that you have a basic understanding of polarization and Malice Law, we're now going to do a demonstration using some very cool equipment and some phone apps and so forth to demonstrate Malice Law here in the lab. And I'm going to hand it over to Tom. So the setup is quite simple. I've just got a polarizing filter here. There's literally just two polarizing filters here. And on the front, you can see there's a dial with some angles on it. And that's all it is. So we're going to have a go at uh, measuring the, the intensity of light that comes out the other side of the polarizing filter. So the way that we're going to do that is with a phone. We're going to shine the LED light into the back there. It's my phone, which has uh, this app on it, Firefox, that you can see. Um, I'm going to put the sensor, which is right at the front here, to the other side, and you should see, uh, in this case, not a lot. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch the angle of the polarizing filter 90 degrees from where it is now. Alright, there you go. So that's 90 degrees. We've changed from the, pol the polarizer where you can't see it, now you can see the light. And you can see the, uh, the graph there has started to change because the different amount of light has gone into the, into the sensor. I'll change it back to another 90 degrees. Alright, there we are, back at 90 degrees, or zero. Now what I'm going to do is do that again, but this time we'll look at the numbers. We'll, we'll, watch, the, uh, we'll watch the numbers. We'll go 10 degrees by 10 degrees, and mm -hmm. you can see the numbers, so you can even start to graph them. Mm -hmm. So if we flick over to Simple now on this app, which is just recording the number, the value. So as you can see here, if I remove my finger from the sensor, the, uh, the, the light intensity uh, measured in lux, which is light flux, goes right up. So on zero degrees um, difference between the two polarizing, polarizing filters, we're at a, about 560, 600. We're going to go back through down to zero. So you've got zero, 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Now the two polarizers are at right angles, 90 degrees apart, and we have a minimum at about 100 lux. Which is interesting that we're still getting a value for light intensity when we've got the cross polaroids. This value here, this 100 lux, this is from the background lights. We, we've got the uh, lights here for the video. We've got the lights in this room here. We've essentially got this uh, systematic error. What might be quite interesting would be to subtract this background light intensity from all of our previous values to then substitute those into Malice's law equation. Now here is our data that we just collected. We have the angle, we have the intensity, we have the calibrated intensity. So that's the background ambient radiation that Simon referred to, and we subtracted that from the intensity. So we clearly need to use this data and this data. And then I've also included the cosine of the angle in radians and also the cos squared of the angle as well. Now let's see what happens when we graph that. So here's the first graph, and the graph here is the relationship, simply the angle versus the intensity. And we seem to see a sort of cosine relationship, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's cosine relationship. It could be a cosine squared relationship, and that's what we're looking for. The intensity that we're supposed to have is equal to the initial intensity multiplied by cos squared of the angle. So let's look at our second graph, and our second graph looks at the cosine of the angle. Now it's not a linear relationship, we're getting a curve here. So that suggests that this is not the relationship we're after. But the fact that this is seemed to be a parabolic seems to suggest that we are having a co-squared angle relationship. And our last graph is this one here. Now in this case, we're looking at co-squared of the angle versus intensity. And in this case, we're getting a lovely linear line. That is the relationship between the intensity 
and the cos squared of the angle is a direct relationship. And that direct relationship allows us to determine the slope and the slope is going to be the initial incoming intensity. And is that true? Well, the slope of this line is 428.79, roughly 430. And that up here is roughly our initial intensity at angle zero. So this certainly confirms Malice law. So that's a great little demonstration of Malice's Law and polarization. Now you'll notice there we use the app called Firefox. It's a great app that is free if I remember. Free. It's free. Which has not only great sensors such as light, but it can also do various aspects in mechanics. So it's got an, um, it's using its accelerometers and so forth. Thank you for watching our latest video on Malice's Law and polarization. And particularly want to thank Sue Farouk for joining and helping us interview because none of us are excited about rocking up to strangers. So Sue, it was fantastic to help out in many Happy ways. Out. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Bye for now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please remember, like, share and subscribe. And by the way, drop a comment down below if the video particularly has been useful. And finally, consider supporting me via Patreon. The idea is to develop resources and equipment to continue to teach physics at a high school level. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.